Here's another fun exercise for beginners. The free tutorial is at watsonwatercolor.com. Start with an outline which you can trace. For the light blue background, mix a big puddle of a pretty blue. Wet the background with clean water. Well, it's mostly clean water, but my brush still had a little blue in it. For a soft background with no brush strokes, use plenty of water. Make the background good and wet, and then paint on some of your blue, which should spread out. Next, wet the vase. Your vase can be any color you like. Mine is mostly pink, but I add a tiny bit of my blue so it's leaning towards purple. I want to start in the middle because I want the middle darker than the edges. This is the first wash, so as long as you get it a little darker, that's fine. For the tulips, three of the tulips will be pink also. For the white tulips, you want a little bit of gray. I mixed my red and blue and added a tiny bit of black. You want the white tulips darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. While those parts dry, you can paint the table with any color you like, but make sure it's fairly dark. Dark brown or dark blue would be a good choice. And now you're ready for the second wash of color on the flowers. Just to push the dark even darker. Darker gray on the bottom of the first white tulip. darker pink on the pink tulips. And for that, I'm using paint straight from the tube for real color. Now 
Next, paint the leaves with lots of variety. Don't paint the leaf all one color. The center leaf is dark on the end. Then add more yellow for lighter and go back to really dark at the bottom. If the colors don't blend, rinse your brush, wipe the excess water on a paper towel, and use a damp brush to blend. One stem is light green and one stem is dark green. There is no right or wrong color to paint these leaves. You just want most of the leaves to have some lighter and darker areas for nice variety and mostly darker towards the bottom near the vase. If you don't get any variety in your first wash of color, just add more dark after it dries. Now to deepen the color on the vase. I add a line under the rim I wet the vase again and put more color in the middle you can always change your painting as you go and maybe a top of a leaf peeking out at the top also. Next comes the lace. Painting lace is not hard. First we're going to put in the shading using a little bit of gray to suggest a few folds in the cloth. Then paint the scalloped blue edges. Then 
and add the cutouts with dots along the bottom line. If you'd like to see more on painting lace, leave me a comment and I'll do another video. For the background, the original photo showed the bokeh effect. That's broken circles in the background. And you can add that easily. Cut a stencil from an old photograph or piece of watercolor paper. Wet a piece of Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser and squeeze out the excess water so it's just damp. Hold the stencil where you want the circle and use the sponge to wipe off some of the paint. You don't have to wipe off the complete circle on each one. You can just wipe off part of it. And for variety, use more than one stencil. Here's a smaller circle. The bokeh effect can add a little interest to your background or cover up any area you don't like. Finally, we're almost done. I'm using opaque white to add highlights to the vase, and you can also use it to lighten areas on the cloth or the tulips. Mostly the white is to add the baby's breath. Just put tiny blobs of white where you want the little flowers. If the area is too light for the white to show up, you can use a little light gray to indicate the baby's breath in the light areas. Having some light and some dark baby's breath is a nice effect. For the stems, you can use black paint on a small brush or an ink pen. I'm tempted to put a bee flying into the flowers, but this painting looks pretty good as it is. I hope your painting is beautiful and I hope this lesson helps you learn a little bit more about painting flowers, leaves, and lace in watercolor. Happy painting!